not. Uh, by the time we have raised a uh, pre-poll, I request all the participants who are joining to kindly submit their polls as the feedback is very valuable to us. Good evening all, this is Dr. Shubhi from Medical Learning Hub. We welcome you to a tuberculosis webinar on genital tuberculosis clinical protocols in diagnosis and management with case presentations. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce our speakers for today, Dr. Ajay Kumar Behra and Dr. Anupama Dave. We welcome you, sir and ma'am, to our platform. Dr. Ajay Kumar Behra is a professor in Department of Pulmonary Medicines, AIMS Raipur, also a nodal officer in COVID-19. Sir is state, uh, sir is state uh, task force chairperson in NTEP and also been awarded numerous awards like I am a National President Appreciation Award, COVID-19 Care Control Chief Minister Appreciation Awards, Corona Yoda Samman, awarded champion for clean air by all uh, by Lung Care Foundation. We welcome you, sir, on our platform. Yes, yes. Our next speaker for today, Dr. Anupama Dave, who is professor and unit head of department mm -hmm. of Ops and Gyne, MGMC Indore. Ma'am is Department Superintendent, MTH COVID Women's Hospital in Law, and also, an, also organizing Scientific Committee Chairperson in uh, AICOG 2022 in Law. Ma'am is presently secre uh, Secretary of uh, ISOPARB in Law Chapter and being awarded numerously by as a recipient of Foxy Sun International Travel, uh, Traveling Fellowship 2016. She has received ICOG Foreign Travel Award and a winner of prestigious Foxy uh, Charan Award 2013 for research. Ma'am has been winner of DR Amrendra Nath Dan Award and invited faculty of AICOG since last 15 years. She has publications of over 49, 45 literature in national as well as international mm -hmm. journals. I welcome you ma'am to our platform. As I read the structure of webinar, our participants must see that we have launched pre-poll. I request all the participants to kindly submit their polls. After the welcome note is delivered, our first speaker would take up the topic on genital TB diagnosis and management, Dr. Ajay Kumar Bhera. And our next speaker, Dr. Anupama Dave, would take up genital TB case presentations. After both these speaker sessions, we would have a QA and a for 10 minutes and a vote of thanks would be delivered. And the second poll would be raised after vote of thanks. I request all the participants to kindly stay with us till the next poll. Mm -hmm. The general instructions of this webinar are, all participants will be muted during the webinar. If you have any queries, please type in Q&A section. If you have any comments, please type in chat mm -hmm. section. Mm -hmm. Queries and questions will be addressed at the end of webinar by the moderator. This session will be recorded and the recordings would be shared by email notifications once the recorder is available. Polls will be raised at the start and at the end of the session. I request all the participants to kindly submit their feedback. I would like to take a moment to thank uh, our supporter for today, Viatris. Viatris is committed to meaningfully reducing the burden of both non-communicable and infectious diseases by leveraging our scientific medical manufacturing and commercial expertise to develop holistic mm -hmm. integrated solutions mm -hmm. for diagnosis, prevention, and treatment mm -hmm. of these conditions. They are also a global leader in treating infectious diseases such as HIV AIDS, hepatitis, and tuberculosis, and offer an extensive portfolio across these diseases state. From manufacturing a pediatric-friendly enteroviral used to treat HIV-positive infants, to providing HIV self-tests in some low and middle income countries, Viatris is innovating to help patients. With this, I would stop sharing my screen and hand over the platform to Dr. Ajit. Over to you, sir.
Madam, can I present? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So your screen is visible. I request you to kindly make it in the slideshow mode. So you are on mute. Uh, yes, madam. Yes, sir. I, um, request... I can start. Yes, sir. Please make it in <clears throat> slideshow mode if possible. Okay. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. You're audible. Okay. Uh, good evening to all. <clears throat> Thanks to for your invitation for presentation of our <clears throat> genital tuberculosis, that is clinical protocols in diagnosis and management with case presentations. So first introduction, the genital tuberculosis refers to TB of the female and male genital tract. It is usually an insidious disease and can lead to variety of presentations depending on the affected site and stage of disease. Serious adverse outcomes, including infertility in both women and men, chronic pelvic pain, dysmenorrhea, bladder dysfunction, renal failure, even if a death can occur. Some particularly female patients may experience no symptoms at all other than infertility, and meaning that high index of a suspicion and careful clinical evaluation are needed to make the diagnosis. The epidemiology of genital tuberculosis, urogenital TB makes up approximately 4% of all extra pulmonary tuberculosis cases annually in India. This may be an underestimate of the true number of cases as the difficult of a diagnosis, the condition, and lack of clear case definitions may be hampering the reporting of cases. So, the according to society, the frequency of tuberculosis in genital tuberculosis, commonest is the halophian tube, next to endometrium, ovaries, cervix, vulva, and vagina. So, most clinical presentations in 20% sub history of TB in immediate family, and there is past each of tuberculosis. 10 to 11% patients have the asymptom case. And the systemic features like the poor general health persisting over a period of months or years with weight loss, undue fatty, low grade fever, vague, lower abdominal pain. There may be presentation of infertility, menstrual disturbances, abdominal swellings, postpartum bleeding, vaginal discharge, or disparity. The commonest presentation. Most common presentation is initial symptoms in infertility and presenting 40 to 50 percent cases. And there is first history of tuberculosis in the family. Second, commonest symptoms is lower abdominal pain, pain present over several months, which is not usually severe. There may be associated with the swelling of the abdomen and episodes of acute lower abdominal pain going to the secondary infection by pyogenic organism. In advanced disease, pelvic pain becomes severe and gets aggravated by pyotas, exercise, and masses. The third commonest symptom is menstrual complaints like menorrhagia, menometrorrhagia, intermenstrual bleeding, oligomenorrhea, postmenopausal bleeding, or menstrual cycle may be normal. And, uh, Advanced active pulmonary tuberculosis produce, that is aminuria, that may be concomitant genital tuberculosis is the rare. Complete destruction of the ovary by genital TB seldom occurs, so ovarian failure is not the cause. End organ failure, 
secondary to endometrial associations. So I have so three cases. Since the genital urinary tuberculosis, one in the urinary tract, second is the male, female genital tract, and third is male genital tract. So one first case, according to case presentation, one first case, a 35 year old male came with a fever and increased frequency of urine for six months. And there is loss of appetite and loss of weight for six months. There is no history of TB in the past, no history of a contact with the TB, and urine for pyogenic culture is sterile. So no response to antibiotic for seven days. So what is our likely diagnosis? So usually it is very difficult to diagnose extra pulmonary tuberculosis like genital tuberculosis. So usually tuberculosis is diagnosed according to microbiology confirm or clinically suspicions or correlated radiologically. So any tuberculosis can diagnose suspect clinically. Previously it was known to suspected tuberculosis. Now it is presumed tuberculosis and uh, correlated radiologically confirm that is microbiologically. That's why this case is patient with lower urinary tract symptoms like frequency, urgency, and naturia, associated dysuria and or hematuria for last two weeks, which has not responded to a three to seven days course of antibiotics. So patient some systemic symptoms of fever, weight loss, and nitrates. So these use of a toroquinolog in treatment of UTI can reduce the sensitivity of subsequent test for microtuberculosis in a tract and should therefore avoid it. Because the chloroquinols like lipofloxacillin, ofloxacillin, moxifloxacillin, these are reserved drugs for the tuberculosis. If we will give the quinolones, the symptoms will result. So we should not use this chloroquinol because they cannot confuse with also diagnosis. So most important for a diagnosis, we'll do chest X-ray because there is maybe previous uh, any uh, tuberculosis old case or any active tuberculosis from X-ray. So the typical characteristic features of a chest X-ray, patients having bilateral shadows in pulmonary or there is infiltration, consolidation, cavitations. These are typical characteristic finding, pleomorphic finding found in each chest x-ray. And so since the extra pulmonary most of the times it is associated with HIV infection. So as a routine, we must exclude this is the HIV testing and renal function test and urine microscopy and culture if it is sterile pyuria and early morning urine sampling, three to five early morning urine sample collected for staining and microscopy for FB and culture for myocardial tuberculosis. While the sensitivity of the test is low, culture remains the most reliable role to confirm the diagnosis of the TB and allows drugs on susceptible testing to be carried out. The ultrasound of the kidney, ureter, and bladder are routinely should be excluded because any underlying pathology presents. And other tests in selected patients, so that the contrast CT, urography, MRI urography without contrast, FNC, where assumption if there is a mass level or fluid collections are identified on imaging, radiologically guided aspiration with a specimen subject to staining of a and microscopy AB, culture and cytology may confirm the diagnosis of TB. Erythrocystoscopy with without bladder of a biopsy. So this is the radiological finding, ultrasound of renal tuberculosis, this is a known case of tuberculosis that is hypoecy areas in the renal cortex suggest for lower pagesons. And uh, what is the role of a biopsy? Biopsy of the lesions in urinary tract is required when other less invasive tests are inconclusive. That is a malignancy also suspected. So such specimen should be subject to staining and microscopy acid fast bacilli, culture and drug susceptibility testing and histopathology. So any biopsy, we must do staining and for staining and uh, for ZN stain, culture sensitivity or histopathology for confirmations. So treatment, 
So diagnosis of a staphylococcal multiplicity is most easy. Clinical suspicion and we can correlate radiologically and confirm by the FNC or heart biopsy. After diagnosis of the staphylococcal multiplicity, the treatment will give you drug sensitivity. So two uh, tuberculosis, one is drug sensitive tuberculosis or drug resistant tuberculosis. So for drug sensitive tuberculosis, we will give you four drugs for two months. That is for intensive phase and three drugs for four months. That is for continuous phase. So total duration is six months. And, and how will you follow up? The most important follow up is treatment after end of the intensive phase and end of the continuous phase. So what we will see on intensive phase, we will see clinically whether these symptoms are result, any improvement in urinary symptoms, so we must at the end of the intensive phase. And always correlatively, radiologically, and if possible, we can bacteriologically, we also confirm. In early morning urine culture, if you positive diagnosis, this may be repeated at eight weeks and at the end of the treatment. So this tuberculosis should follow at the end of the intensive phase and end of the continuous phase. Urgent sur surgical intervention is required when urinary obstruction prevents drainage of urine from kidney to prevent renal damage. So this is the second case that is clinical case that is 35 years old female came with fever and aminvira for six months and a loss of appetite, loss of weight six months. So most important be loss of weight. So the, for clinical loss of weight more than 10% in the last six months in adults, in, if the pediatric patients, it is loss of weight more than three, uh, the five percent in last uh, three months the, or no weight gain. This is the most important point. And no history of TB in the past, no history of uh, contact with the TB and your pregnancy test is negative, ultrasound that is bilateral TB over here mass present. So what is our likely diagnosis. So, so presumed female genital tuberculosis, that is premenopausal women present with the infertility, menstrual problems, unexplained abdominal pain, or pelvic mass. Rarely patients have symptoms of fever, weight loss, and night sweats. So ectopic pregnancy and uh, cervical vulva lesions are rare present features. A post O page present with the vaginal bleeding. So diagnosis, most will it correlate radiologically that the chest X-ray, no the any previous uh, uh, previous uh, finding of a old case of tuberculosis in heel lesion or a calcification or in active tuberculosis and routinely will do HIV test and exclude pregnancy test also and do ultrasound as a routine in females any underlying pathology patients. So histosalpography may be done as part of investigation of infertility. CT pelvis or MRI to further character lesions and plan surgical intervention in selected patients. The endometrial aspirate, it should be where facility exists. If it is a facility is present, we can do staining on a microscopy acid first bacilli and culture and drug susceptibility testings. So this is the one picture showing histosalpiographs. And uh, if a tuberculosis is suspected, we can see there may be a uh, tobacco pouch appearance. There is a suggestive for, for tuberculosis. It is not confirmatory. Radiologically, it is suggestive or correlated. We, histosalpin, we may get TVG enlarged and distended. Ostium remain patent with recognized inverted fimbria. So it is tobacco pouch. Patients may have cotton wool plug appearance. That is focal irregularity and areas of a calcification occurs within lumen of the halofian tubes. Patients may have tufted appearance, that is, cageous ulcerations of the mucosa of the fallopian tube produces an irregular contour of the lumen of the tubes. Diverticular cavities may surround the ampulla and give a tough like appearance. Patients may have been that the five step appearance or rigid pipe, like the scarring of the fallopian tubes, irregular, rigid, and filling defect in uterine cavity, that is, adhesions. The patients may have been beaded appearance, multiple constrictions along the course of fallopian tube of histosulfine due to fibrotic structures. 
patient may have been T septic uterine cavity, like the scarring results in T septic uterine cavity with intravasation of the contrast. Patients may have been fast septic fallopian tubes, may be filling defects, may have a morphic in appearance, may have a sperm head appearance of golf club. So these are uh, suggestive of extra pulmonary genital tuberculosis eh, on radiological basis. And uh, what is the role of uh, laparoscopy? Laparoscopy with the bias of lesion is required when although less invasive mm -hmm. tests are inconclusive. When malignancy is also suspected, when it's part of infertility, investigation with less invasive tests are inconclusive. Laparoscopy offers the dual advantage of pelvic organ visualization and specimen collection from otherwise inaccessible sites. Specimen should be sent for a staining and microscopy for acid fast bacilli, culture and drug sensitive testing, and histopathology. So these are pictures showing the CG uh, uh, abnormalities and uh, what is the treatment. So diagnosis of the genital tuberculosis in female. So first clinical suspicion correlate radiologically and confirmed by the microbacteriologically. So after diagnosis is done, will the treatment drugs and CT test that will be six months. Two month intensive phase four drugs and a four, uh, four months for continuous phase three drugs. And same will, uh, that is follow up after end of the intensive phase and end of the continuous phase. And surgery is sometimes needed for large residual TV ovarian abscess. Surgery is associated to the higher complications rate and there are a lot of adhesions as well as possibility of infection recurrence. Tubal anatomy can sometimes be restored surgically in infertile women following a course of ATT. Giving repeated course of ATT to women who remains infertile following completed ATT for female genital tuberculosis is not necessary. One is the third case, clinical patient of 55 years old male came with fever and scrotal schooling for six months. It is associated with the discharging sinuses. There is loss of appetite, loss of weight last six months, no history of TB in past, no history of a contact with TB and ultrasound, scrotum shows epidermal mass present. So what is our diagnosis? So that is a suspicion of presumptive male genital tuberculosis. Patients have the scrotal pain or swelling for two weeks or more, responding to seven to 14 days course of antibiotic with discharging sinus muscotum. Rarely patients have systemic symptoms of fever, weight loss, and night sweats. So diagnose same, same protocol, we'll do chest x-ray, HIV, and renal function test, and we'll do urine microscopy for culture for non microactive organism, that is sterile pyuria, and early morning urine samples, three to five early morning sampling, and uh, ultrasound to rule out any underlying pathology. So this is showing ultrasound of scrotum. Ultrasonography, imagine scrotum is young male patient shows left epidemo or kitis resulting from tuberculosis. So confirmatory by the FNC of epidermal mass. Specimens should be subject to staining of a microscope of acid for bacilli, culture and drug sensitivity testing and cytology. There is the risk of a damaging the epidemic and causing infertility. So role of IFC, if FNC does not confirm the diagnosis or malignancy is suspected, biopsy is lesion is indicated. So specimens should be subject to staining and microscopy acid fast bacilli, culture and drug sensitivity testing and histopathology. So treatment is the same, that is two month intensive phase and six, four month continuous phase and, uh, and a repeat follow up also end of the intensive phase, end of the continuous phase and uh, Epidemic to be may be required if there is a vegetating abscess which persists despite completion of a course of ATT. When the failure of the medical treatment, we can follow up the surgical indications. In fact, it is possible long-term complication of microtactive process. So this is the flow chart by Lancet 2080. If it is the male genital uh, tuberculosis or female genital tuberculosis, how is the flow chart? How will you follow up for diagnosis of tuberculosis? Suspicion of clinically, then we will do bacteriological confirmation and the treatment that is course of treatment. And limited, that is limited role of a PCR based. 
now the molecular testing like uh, cb not true not test are doing and it is very uh, less sensitive extra pulmonary tuberculosis in one study cb not could detect tuberculosis basically only 25% cases among female genital tuberculosis the recommendation was not possible at this time regarding the use of pcr based test female genital tuberculosis as per index tb guideline so these guidelines is following by the index tb guidelines more studies required for further utilization of the test so to summarize my the, the, the genital tuberculosis either male genital tuberculosis or female genital tuberculosis so it is very difficult to diagnose extra pulmonary tuberculosis previously we had uh, diagnosed tuberculosis either confirmation so now a day's clinical diagnosis that is uh, uh, previously it was a suspicion tuberculosis now it is presumptive tuberculosis if a surgeon or physician thinking it is a clinical is a case of a tuberculosis so we can start anti tubercular treatment two month intensive phase and four month continuous phase so these are we are treating in uh, pulm that is extra pulmonary tuberculosis in drug sensitive tuberculosis if we we'll do extra that is extra pulmonary drug resistant tuberculosis there are regimens only change but diagnosis is same that is for MD, that is extra that is drug resistant tuberculosis three regimen oral one mono poly regimen second all oral shorter md regimen and a longer 80 to 20 months or all oral multi drug resistant tuberculosis so the diagnosis same but treatment will vary from drug sensitive tuberculosis or drug resistant tuberculosis thank you Thank you so much, sir, for your wonderful presentation on genital TB diagnosis and management. Now I request Dr. Anupama Dave to carry on and to throw some insights on genital TB case presentations. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, sir, I request you to kindly stop sharing the screen. Yeah. Over to you, ma'am. Ma'am, you are on mute. Please unmute yourself. A very good afternoon to all of you. I would first start these slides. Sorry. Just. Um, the screen is visible. Um, at the outset, I would like to thank Medical Learning Hub for uh, inviting me and for coordinating this uh, wonderful session on genital tuberculosis, a non-communicable disease, but yet, yet very important. Just now we had heard Dr. Ajoy speaking on um, genital tuberculosis, which included both male and female aspects. Being an OBS and gynae specialist, I would be dealing with those aspects which are um, important for our point of view and those cases also. So female genital tuberculosis case-based discussion. In my presentation, I would include a bit of introduction, diagnosis and management, then the case dis discussions and then the take home message. Prevalent infectious disease in developing countries where this is much prevalent, where pulmonary tuberculosis is widespread. The causative organism we all know is mycobacterium tuberculosis, but rarely mycobacterium bovis and a typical mycobacteria. It is usually secondary to tuberculosis of lungs or other organs with infection reaching through various routes like hematogenous lymphatic route or sometimes evenly di direct spread from abdominal tuberculosis. And in Females, the most frequently sites which are affected are fallopian tubes, endometrium, and ovaries. TB of cervix also has been noted, and those cases include 5 to 24 percent of genital tract and 0.1 to 0.65 percent of general cases. The incidence, it is a major public health problem globally. We have seen nearly 10 million people 
developing active tuberculosis each year. And there are deaths to 1.33 million deaths. 85% of these tuberculosis deaths occur in developing countries. And that's why it becomes so more important to try to treat it and try to eradicate it rather. 75% of the cases belong to 15 to 45 year age group. The global prevalence of genital tuberculosis is 27%. And multi-drug resistance and extensive drug resistant tuberculosis have a high morbidity and mortality. And therefore, they are matters of real concern. Female genital tuberculosis can have varied presentations and sometimes it can mimic malignancy also. As Dr. Ajay had mentioned, the most common presenting symptoms of genital tract tuberculosis in females are infertility, menstrual irregularities, and pelvic pain. Now coming to the diagnosis and management. WHO had declared TB as a global emergency in 1993, and then had recommended directly observed treatment short course, that is the DOTS therapy, which we commonly call it, to tackle the disease globally, especially in developing countries where it is more prevalent. The revised National TB Control Program in India has incorporated DOT strategy all over India beginning in 2005. And we have diagnosed nearly 71% of cases and cured more than 87% cases with a seven-fold reduction in mortality. Early detection and suitable combination treatment with adequate dosage of drugs can help to reduce dam damage and future infertility in these women. The clinical features, as it was mentioned, it may be asymptomatic, but then it would cause an uncharacteristic clinical presentation and would be a diagnosing dilemma. It could be a challenge in diagnosing such cases who are asymptomatic. Symptoms in each patient can be differently found based on severity, based on the site it has involved and the stage of the disease. Common symptoms include formation of a large pelvic mass, chronic pelvic inflammatory disease related symptoms, menstrual irregularities or postmenopausal bleeding, excessive vaginal discharge, symptoms of typical tuberculosis, general symptoms like weight loss, anxiety, pyrexia, etc. too could be present. And then mostly it is, it is suspected when there is infertility, which could be primary or secondary. These are an array of investigations which are done and then what we see in them. In a blood test, we would get anemia, raised leukocytes, lymphocytes, and a raised ESR. The serological tests which are done on blood are considered sensitive. They are not considered sensitive and specific, and therefore they have been banned by WHO as well as Government of India. We have an X-ray chest, especially a PA view, which may show active or past healed pulmonary tuberculosis. The Montux or tuberculin test and interferon gamma release assay alone Used for, they are not used alone for the diagnosis of um, tuberculosis. A positive test just indicates infection, but not disease, and a negative test do not rule out infection. So they are not conclusive. Blood markers, it has been seen that CA-125 levels, which are highly raised in ovarian malignancies, can also be significantly raised in advanced abdominal tuberculosis. The imaging methods are frequently used in ultrasound, which can show all these lesions, which could be present like a tube ovarian mass, a thin endometrium with heterogeneous appearance of endometrium or endometrial fluid, which can raise a suspicion that tuberculosis could be present, especially if intrauterine cyanichi could be demonstrated or in hydrosalpings with fog wheel appearance, etc., can be seen in an ultrasound. In many cases, when we are in doubt, we go for a CT scan. In this, masses in abdomen and pelvis with ascites, thickened and enhanced peritoneum can raise a suspicion of tuberculosis. The most important thing is an endometrial biopsy. If the uterus is affected, then an endometrial biopsy, a curettage or aspirate, which is performed in the luteal phase, that is day 21, these are most important tests for the diagnosis of genital tuberculosis. All efforts should be made to achieve a microbiological confirmation. And sometimes we may need multiple biopsies because they help in increasing the pickup rate. WHO approved rapid diagnostic tests, which are a cartridge-based nucleic acid amplification tests like CBNAT and GeneXpert 
and RAF and liquid culture by microbacterial growth indicator tube MGIT with phenotypic drug sensitivity testing and genotypic drug sensitivity testing by line probe testing. So these are the advanced tests which can be done on the endometrial sample. And it's always that this endometrial sample should be collected in cell line. So with the help of these tests, we can identify tuberculosis, genital tuberculosis. Polymerase chain reaction is a fast, sensitive, and specific test to diagnose mycobacterial DNA in endometrial sample because it targets these two specific genes. It has a high sensitivity and can detect 1 in 10 bacilli per ml. But the important thing is that it has a high false positive rate. And that is why it becomes then in cases inconclusive. And then we need a microbiological sample to confirm. It is recommended not to start antitubal treatment only on PCR unless there is evidence of female genital tuberculosis clinically on examination, on radiology, or endoscopy. A positive CBNAT result is a useful confirmation, but a negative result does not always rule out TB. Expert, the gene expert test is an automated test which can detect purified DNA of mycobacterium tuberculosis on the endometrial sample. It can also detect rifampicin resistance and can give report within two hours. So the gene expert test is very useful. Loop mediated isothermal amplification test also has been used. Now the second aspect that is the role of laparoscopy and hysteroscopy. Whenever we have women who have chronic pelvic pain or abdominal masses or who have infertility, the first thing in the uh, treatment aspect, the first thing to consider is to do a laparoscopy. And in some cases of infertility, we do a laparoscopy and hysteroscopy together. So these are done to help diagnose TB of fallopian tubes. It allows better visualization of fallopian tubes, ovary and peritoneal cavity, and helps to restore normal anatomical abnormalities found in the pelvis if possible. So some surgical intervention can also be done at that time. There are several findings that can be found during laparoscopy, like presence of tubercles, which we had seen in those slides, inflamed or blue-colored uterus, salpingitis, bucuritis, teomas, tubal occlusion and hydrosalpings, sometimes dye dripping from the fimbrial end on chromoperturbation, free peritoneal fluid looking like blood, caseation in the pouch of Douglas, frozen pelvis, and or mental adhesions. These all give a suspicion of tuberculosis. Hysteroscopy should be combined with leproscopy to exclude or and confirm endometrial involvement. A pale looking cavity, the presence of tubercles, small, white, caseous nodules, varying rates of intrauterine Sinica and Asherman syndrome guide us towards the diagnosis of tuberculosis. As you can see in this picture, hysteroscopic picture, adhesions are visible. There is a high risk of complications and difficulties in performing hysteroscopy, especially if the uterus is small and shrunken. And this procedure needs to be performed by an expert gynecologist, preferably under laparoscopic guidance. As you can see, in this, this is a laparoscopic picture showing adhesions, typical few heart cutis syndrome with hanging gallbladder. Here also, these are typical features of, um, which may help in identifying tuberculosis like omental adhesions, bilateral hydrosalpine steomasses with adhesions and frozen pelvis, tubercles on the surface, here also tubercles caseating masses are seen. Now coming to the differential diagnostics. Um, there could be a wide variety of uh, conditions like in patients with TOMAS. It could be an ectopic pregnancy, appendicitis, PID, or even endometriosis. Or you can think the other way around. In a case of endometriosis, sometimes we can get tuberculosis also. Similarly, for tuberculous endometrium, AUB, endometrial polyp, or endometrial cancer could be the differential diagnosis. Ovarian tuberculosis, ovarian cyst, ovarian cancer, ovarian ectopic, cervical tuberculosis, cervical cancer, cervical hypertrophy, cervical ectopic. Sometimes in cases of cervical, those in whom we have suspected cervical cancer and we take a biopsy, it may come out to be tuberculosis. Similarly, any lesion on the vagina like vaginal cancer, warts and cysts can be mistaken and confused with vaginal tuberculosis. Vulval lesions like vulval cancer, Bartholin cyst, condyloma, acuminata, vulval and vaginal warts of many kinds 
even patients with granulomas like syphilis infection leprosy lgv schistosomiasis they are also in the differential diagnosis of tuberculosis this is the treatment regime um, which sir has also discussed in new microbiologically confirmed clinically diagnosed or previously treated drug sensitive patients um, the regime would consist of, it all depends on weight the high dose and low dose intensive phase of 2 months followed by continuous phase of 4 months in those who are multiple drug resistance or possible probable multiple drug resistant cases intensive phase daily of 6 to 9 months followed by a continue continuation phase daily of 18 months and these are the other medications quinolones which are commonly given along with pyrazinamide and ethambutol now the surgical treatment sometimes we do get cases of tubo ovarian abscesses or um, large masses in the pelvis along with adhesions in those cases um, tuberculosis can be suspected and if tuberculosis is suspected ideally we do give them anti tubercular treatment and then operate again but sometimes surgical treatment by removal of uterus both tubes and ovaries can be done for persistent disease for presence of tubercles pyosalpings and tio masses especially it needs to be done for non healing ulcers in multi drug resistant tuberculosis despite medical treatment surgical treatment in tuberculosis is difficult and hazardous with more complications because you know there are lots of adhesions and so in these procedures you can encounter more complications like perforation of the uterus or injury to the bladder and injury to the viscera and bowel can occur so they should be performed with extreme caution limited surgery in the form of drainage of persistent pelvic or tubo ovarian abscess despite medical treatment can be performed and has been recommended by american thoracic society in all these cases after giving them anti tubercular treatment repeat laparoscopy and hysteroscopy is advised now coming to the three important case discussions um the case scenario first a 26 year old lady para zero presented to the opd with chief complaints of polymenorrhagia post coital bleeding and discharge for vaginae since last 6 months so she has bleeding problems and post coital bleeding on a general examination as usually patients with tuberculosis are she was thin built and had mild pallor on abdominal examination a supra pubic lump of 16 to 18 week size of gravid uterus firm non tender on palpation was present so the uterus was enlarged on ps examination for speculum the cervix appeared hypertrophic congested with a nodular growth present on the anterior lip and there was foul smelling discharge as well on biomanual examination the same suprapubic mass was felt which could not be felt separately from the uterus it had restricted mobility and the fornices were found to be thickened and tender So, seeing all this history, a strong suspicion of cervical malignancy with pyometra was made. An ultrasound was done, which revealed a normal cervix with grossly enlarged uterus, with a large uterine fibroid and a small left ovarian cyst. So, this was the lesion on the cervix, and the uterine findings were the presence of a fibroid and ovarian cyst. Differential diagnosis includes cervical endometrial TB, endometrial cancer with pyometra, cervical malignancy with pyometra, PID, secondary infertility due to tubal blockage, and fibroid uterus. Now, in this in this case, two weeks antibiotic treatment was given, and she was re-evaluated. The cervical lesion for that, a colposcopic guided cervical biopsy was done, and endometrial tissue sampling was also done. Test X-ray was found to be normal. ESR was raised montuk test was borderline positive and anti tb igm antibodies were equivocal endometrial tb pcr which is usually done showed no mycobacterium tuberculosis dna detected so it was negative a histopathology however of that endometrial tissue confirmed the presence of caseating granulomas comprising of langhan cells of giant langhan type of giant cells which was suggestive of tubercular endometrial and tubercular cervicitis so the endometrial sample histopathology was not done the cervical histopathology showed these findings patient was started on anti tubercular treatment and was reevaluated after 6 months it was found that the growth had regressed there was marked relief in all symptoms except for menorrhagia 
and patient was ad then admitted for myomectomy and antitubercular treatment was continued for another six months and all this her symptoms um, resolved. So this was a case of cervical tuberculosis. TB of the cervix is rare. It is almost always secondary to tubercular salpingitis and endometritis. In rare cases, cervical tuberculosis may be primary, infect primary infection or it could be due to primary infection introduced from a partner with tubercular epididymitis or other genitourinary disease. So if the male partner has these symptoms, the male partner can, cause can lead to cervical tuberculosis of the female partner. The gross appearance of a tubercular cervix is also variable. It may present as papillary, ulcerative, interstitial, or endocervical or polypoidal forms. It is thus emphasized that tuberculosis should form an important differential diagnosis for malignant appearing lesions of the cervix. A high index of suspicion for tuberculosis is justified in dealing with cervical lesions in females of reproductive age group, especially in the endemic area. So whenever you see a lesion on the cervix in a woman of reproductive age group, tuberculosis should be in your differential diagnosis. We have even seen cases of young girls, unmarried, who have not had any, had any sexual activity, having menorrhagia and then on doing a scan and then exploring further, we find that tuberculosis of the cervix is there. So it is a condition which should be there in your differential diagnosis. Now coming to the second case scenario, a 32 year old woman, second gravida, para one means she had one live birth, one child delivery, has come to you for advice. She had recently been diagnosed with pulmonary tuberculosis and is on treatment. She had her menses three months back and thought that her amenorrhea was due to anti-tubercular medications she was taking. But when her nausea and vomiting got worse, she consulted a physician and on ultrasound examination was advised to have a 12 weeks pregnancy. She's happy to continue this pregnancy, but is worried about the risks to her baby. What would you advise her and what would be her follow-up? Well, because she has a pregnancy of 12 weeks, she has been taking these antitubercular drugs in the first trimester. And some of these medications may cause congenital abnormalities in the fetus. So in this situation, we can advise her a detailed scan in order to identify some problems which may have occurred. And we can also confirm the medications which she has taken. Now, if she wishes to continue, everything comes out to be normal. She needs to continue her antitubercular medications and she needs to come for follow-up, regular scans and regular antenatal checkups. So tuberculosis and pregnancy. Untreated tuberculosis represents a greater hazard to a pregnant woman and her fetus than does its treatment. So it should be treated. Treatment should be initiative, initiated when the probability of tuberculosis is moderate and a patient with pulmonary tuberculosis during pregnancy must take full treatment even in the first trimester as all four primary drugs, isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol are safe in pregnancy. In a study by Jana and et al., they observed increased maternal and perinatal morbidity in pregnant women complicated with either pulmonary or extrapulmonary tuberculosis. However, they had seen that with adequate treatment, nutrition, and care during pregnancy, these, there seems to be no adverse maternal and perinatal outcomes in these situations. Infant born to women with untreated tuberculosis may be of lower birth weight. And in rare circumstances, the infant may be born with tuberculosis. So it is better to start the antitubercular drugs in pregnancy. Although the drugs used in the initial treatment regime for tuberculosis cross the placenta, but they do not appear to have any harmful effects in the fetus. Now, treatment for latent tubercular infection and pregnancy. Most pregnant women, treatment for latent tubercular infection can be delayed until two or three months postpartum to avoid administering unnecessary medications. But those women who are at high risk for progression from latent to tubercular disease, especially if they are in contact with someone who is infectious or who has infectious tuberculosis, treatment for latent tuberculosis should not be delayed and on the basis of pregnancy alone, even in the first trimester. So if they are at a very high risk, they need to be given treatment in spite of being 
having latent tuberculosis. There are few anti tuberculosis drugs which are contraindicated in pregnant women, and they should be kept in mind streptomycin, canamycin, amikacin, capriomycin, fluoroquinolones. So, the mm, second line drugs are not to be started in pregnancy. So, this is the treatment regime four month regime of rifampicin, three month regime of isoniazid and rifampicin, six to nine month daily regime of isoniazid with pyridoxin. Supplementation in pre pregnancy, pyridoxin supplementation is essential. A three month weekly isoniazid and rifapentin regime is not recommended for pregnant women because its safety during pregnancy has not been studied. For tuberculosis disease, preferred initial regimen is isoniazid, rifampicin, ethambutol daily for two months, followed by isoniazid, rifampicin daily or twice weekly for seven months, total of nine months for treatment. Streptomycin should not be used because it has been shown to have harmful effects on the fetus. And pyrazinamide is also not recommended because of its effect on fetus, which is unknown. These recommendations have been taken from the recent CDC guidelines. Now, drug-resistant tuberculosis, pregnant women who are being treated for drug-resistant TB should receive counseling concerning the risks of the fetus because of the known and unknown risks of second-line anti-TB drugs. And important is breastfeeding, these women deliver. And then they um, are also of concerned about breastfeeding. Breastfeeding should not be discouraged for women being treated with first-line antitubercular drugs because the concentration of these drugs in breast milk are too small to produce toxicity in the nursing newborn. Drugs in breast milk are not an effective treatment for TB disease or latent TB in the nursing infant because they are of less concentration. So if the infant has tuberculosis, the infant needs treatment. Breastfeeding women taking INH should take pyridoxin supplementation. Rifampicin can cause orange discoloration of body fluids and they should be kept in mind, including breast milk. This orange discoloration is expected and is harmful, harmless. So this should be counseled to the women. There are currently not enough data to indicate whether the 3-HP regime is safe for women with breastfeeding or not. So that was about pregnancy and tuberculosis. Now coming to the third and last case scenario. A 30-year-old Nali Paris woman was referred with a chief complaint of irregular menstrual cycle. She had been married for five years and unable to conceive despite having regular unprotected intercourse. Ultrasound examination identified bilateral endometriotic cysts. Thus, she was immediately scheduled for laparoscopy. During surgery, bilateral pyosalpinx was seen and patient was treated. That pus was drained and then discharged after one week of surgery. So this, this was the caseation. Results showed tubercles, presence of caseating granuloma, surrounded by epithelial, epithelioid cells, lymphocytes, plasma cells, and joint cells. Genital tuberculosis may be diagnosed during laparoscopic surgery, but it needs to be confirmed with pathology, anatomy, and with a PCR result. A comprehensive history taking along with correct sampling using various imaging modalities and PCR will certainly lead to the diagnosis. It must be noted that infertility due to genital tuberculosis is irreversible in majority of cases, especially if you've done a salpingectomy, even if treatment is achieved promptly. However, it has been seen that if diagnosis has been made early and adequate treatment has been given, some of these women who were infertile can conceive and um, case reports with pregnancy are there in literature. So together with endometrial involvement, tuberculosis of fallopian tube is the leading cause for infertility. Prevalence of genital tuberculosis in infertile population in developing countries is between 5 to 20 percent. It is even higher in those women who have tubal factor infertility, 39 to 41 percent. Typical appearance. So usually in these cases of infertility, we go for a hysterosalpingography. Ideally, a hysterosalpingography is contraindicated if there is active tuberculosis. But in these cases, we do not know whether she is tubercular or not. And in some cases, we already have a report of hysterosalpingography. The various appearances has in depth been discussed by Dr. Ajay. 
calcification to clean a strike, tufted appearance, tubal occlusion, rigid pipe appearance, beaded appearance, hydrosalping, corkscrew appearance, a rare finding of enterotubal fistulae that is between the sigmoid colon and tube also has been seen in these cases. This is a typical HSG finding showing bilateral tubal blocks. This one shows hydrosalpings with fimbrial block. So that was all about the three cases. I hope you got to learn from those case scenarios. My take home message is a diagnosis is made by meticulous history, thorough clinical examination and proper use of investigations. Endometrial aspirate for AP culture, PCR, and histopathology aided by endoscopy are essential. Treatment through the first line drugs in combination for two months, the initial regime, four, four drugs for two months, and then three drugs for four months. Six months treatment is essential. It has been seen that the six months treatment is equivalent to nine month treatment in these cases. Fertility outcome is poor in um, these cases, but IVF ET can be performed for tubal blockage with a normal endometrium with a good outcome. So even if the tubes are blocked, we can give antitubular treatment. And if the endometrium comes out to be normal, test tube baby or IVF ET can be tried. Surrogacy can be advised in a case of damaged endometrium and adoption if the ovaries too are damaged. There is much research going on your vaccines, diagnostics, and medicines like bedaquiline, Delamanid and stem cell therapy are being developed and tried for future. Thank you. Thank you all for a patient listening. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your wonderful case presentations and your knowledge about the genital tuberculosis in females. Now, I would now like to request Dr. Ajay Behra uh, for, on the platform for Q&A section. Uh, madam? Yes, sir. You're audible, sir. Yes. Uh, what, what you are telling, I'm not audible. Uh, so you're, uh, sir, I would like to proceed with the uh, Q&A section. So I request you to take up certain questions which we have received on our Q&A platform. Okay. Uh, so, sir, talking about the male genital TB, so how can it affect the sperm count? For... Uh, as a uh, can TB be a comorbidity uh, to reduce the sperm count, or what alterations could it cause? Because uh, genital, this is the today topic is genital tuberculosis. So genital tuberculosis that may be male genital tuberculosis or female genital tuberculosis. So whether male genital tuberculosis or female genital tuberculosis, we should treat the uh, genital tuberculosis. So most important is the diagnosis. Unless you diagnose and treat the uh, genital tuberculosis, that may be becomes a disseminated. That may be tuberculosis may be spread to other uh, organs also, because uh, that is one uh, uh, life spans for tuberculosis. Uh, Microvector can spread to other organs. So whole purpose to treat genital tuberculosis, or male genital will treat. Otherwise, will treat disseminate. And there is a complication, like so many complications can occur due to this venison. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, ma'am, uh, Dr. Anupama, so what could yes. be the clinical presentation of a secondary vulval TB uh, miscarrying as a, as a tumor in a 40-year-old female patient? It could present as a growth on the vulva. See, a 40-year-old female patient, if she has some growth on vulva, on that portion, she has some growth. That growth could be of various, there could be various differential diagnosis for that growth. And one of them could be a tuberculosis. It, it would appear as a raised growth with somewhat reddish lesion, like that. Okay. So any uh, menopausal changes in, uh, in these kind of patients, like uh, since 40 is like a pre, uh, is a, is a growing post-menopausal uh, age. So in a woman post-perimenopausal, as we call it, in a woman with perimenopausal bleeding, usually these women, they present with excessive bleeding. And then in order to identify the cause, we do an endometrial sampling. 
In these cases, it could be tuberculosis. Thank you for your information. So, sir, taking up another question. Okay. Uh, what test is done for the diagnosis of genital tuberculosis? Usually, when the question is how to diagnose a case of genital tuberculosis, so always keeping it is very difficult to diagnose genital tuberculosis like the extra pulmonary tuberculosis. So, diagnosis depends upon first clinical suspicion, second, correlated radiologically confirm that is mycobacterial. So, this is the diagnosis. So, since it is the extra pulmonary tuberculosis, Madam also will describe how will suspicions, when will suspicion in female patients, most commonest suspicion in infertile patient, infertility. 50% patients uh, the presentation of infertility. So, clinical and associated with the clinical features like constant symptoms, loss of weight, loss of appetite, most important point, loss of weight more than 10% within last six months or uh, any uh, adults. So that is the uh, history of a contact is the most important point and uh, whether patient was taking uh, anti tuberculosis previously, that is most of the patients uh, are present with the reactivation of tuberculosis. So clinical suspicion is the most important and we can radiologically, we can do uh, chest X-ray, typical X-ray patient, because uh, we are thinking only pulmonary, extra pulmonary. Most of the times, extra pulmonary tuberculosis are like genital tuberculosis also associated with the uh, pulmonary tuberculosis. Typical features will be X-ray, chest X-ray, bilateral shadows, upper zone involvement, then uh, craniocodal distribution, pleomorphic pathology, infiltration, cavitation, consolidation, and uh, this is the suspicions and other like uh, if the small lesions, we can do CT scan also MRI and confirmation by either uh, FNC or, or biopsy and uh, most now also uh, we are doing that is the uh, CB not molecular testing CB not and two not test since it is not uh, recommended in the index uh, tuberculosis guideline 2011 because this is the uh, CB not and true not this is molecular test. Uh, Sensitivity is very less, uh, even in 22 or uh, 25%. So now it is not recommended for the DC, uh, that is a rapid molecular test. We can do testing by DC, uh, that is a ZN stain, will give you result immediately. Otherwise, we can do liquid culture, which will give you culture with a sensitivity some weeks, or LPA that uh, takes a duration three days. So we can, these are uh, testing either a ZN stain or rapid molecular testing or liquid culture. So these are tests are confirmatory by the table process. So diagnosis is clinical suspicion, then correlated radiologically come for micromicrologically. Thank you, sir. So, sir, ma'am, any distinguished opinions about the diagnosis of uh, genital tuberculosis? See, for the confirmatory diagnosis of genital tuberculosis, we need to document the presence of mycobacterium tuberculi or its DNA somewhere. So the, usually the test which we do is on an endometrial sample or after laparoscopy, if we've got some samples, we send them for TB-PCR and then that is confirmatory. Sometimes on the basis of suspicion alone, we do not get a sample and on basis of suspicion alone, we do start antitubercular treatment. Like if we've opened the abdomen and there is there are two months of dense adhesions, there is a fluid which is typically tubercular or there are tubercles seen and we cannot get that specimen sample. In that, those cases also, we do start treatment even though um, a diagnostic confirmatory test is done. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so, ma'am, should not NAT be done instead of microscopy for greater chance of confirmation, including Detecting RSR. What is what what is this yeah. RSR? Yeah, I would like to ask Dr. Suresh Das if he could write on the chat section. Uh, well, there are two tests, CB NAT and RTB PCR. So they are confirmatory, but sometimes we have got a tissue, and from that tissue we can do microscopy also. Yeah, definitely, ma'am. Uh, so, ma'am, like if we talk about the genital tuberculosis in females, so uh, if a case of tubercular uh, tub uh, tubo ovarian cystic, uh, there is a mass present at the appendicitis, 
of a of a spot of a 17 year old female so mm. what could be the salient findings and what could be the learning points it is appendicitis or it is a tubo ovarian mass yeah it is a tubo ovarian mass a tubo ovarian mass in a young girl and you're suspecting that um, she could have tuberculosis in those cases menstrual blood tb pcr is done and if it comes out to be positive or if she is a, if she has pulmonary tuberculosis or any evidence of tuberculosis in those cases we won't do anything but give her anti tubercular treatment follow her up and then if the mass does not resolve um, remove that mass we have seen cases of young girls who have come to us with huge masses in abdomen and then those cases we've opened up and we've found tuberculosis in those cases what we have done is to immediately close give anti-tubercular treatment six months nine months sometimes extended treatment also and we've seen that these masses resolve after anti-tubercular treatment so, so ma'am moving back to the previous question so RS and RR, which Dr. Suresh Das have mentioned, is uh, RIF sensitive and RIF resistant. Rifampicin. Rifampicin. Yes. So we do a TB PCR and then we identify and then we give, if it is not responding, then we start the second line drugs. Okay. So, sir, any uh, opinions regarding that? The uh, sensitive and the resistant. Uh, that is for uh, now tuberculosis treatment is drug sensitive tuberculosis, drug resistant tuberculosis. What Madam told that is correctly told. That is the first of what we have till today. Now we have discussed that is drug sensitive tuberculosis. If it drug resistant tuberculosis, either resistant to INH or resistant to rifampicin. So what is the MDR multi drug resistant? A patient having resistant to at least INH rifampicin is MDR tuberculosis. Then there is one word extensive drug resistant tuberculosis. So we we'll know whether it is drug sensitive. If it is sensitive, we will give six months of duration, two month intensive, four month continuous phase. If it is resistant, so now for a drug resistant tuberculosis, whole, a whole purpose will treat that is all oral regimen. So only three regimen, one is one, all mono mono regimen that is resistant to INH will give six month duration. If a patient is resistant to INH, will it should not give INH? Will it give other three drugs: rifampicin, ethamidine, pyridinamide, along with will give one quinolone levofloxacin. Total duration is six month. That is four drugs. Second regimen is all oral shorter regimen. That is. Beta queen regimens will give nine to eleven months. Intensive phase each to five to four to six months, then continuously five months. Third regimen is all longer regimen that is multi drug resistance that is giving eighteen to twenty months. So now the that is MDR or drug resistant tuberculosis three regimen, mono regimen, shorter regimen, and longer regimen. So, mono regimen is six month, and uh, oral regimen, shorter regimen is nine to eleven months. Longer duration is eighteen to twenty months. So, this is the treatment of the drug resistant tuberculosis. Thank you, sir. That was quite knowledgeable for our audience. Uh, so, sir, talking about the route of transmission of genital TB. So, what? Could be the root of uh, transmission and uh, is it hematogenous? Whether I'll give or madam will give? Yeah, sir, please. Okay. The uh, all pulmonary tuberculosis main uh, root of transmission is that is uh, uh, droplet infection, pulmonary tuberculosis. On extra pulmonary, that may be hematogenous or lymphatic spread, or indirectly, that is the uh, spread of the tubercle. Like, so this is the hematogenous lymphatics or indirect spread of a tuberculosis. For pulmonary tuberculosis, is that is the uh, droplet infections. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, ma'am, uh, uh, 
uh, can a woman conceive after having twice repaired rupture ectopic pregnancy yes she can conceive through ivf if et through test tube baby you know if the tubes are twice repaired it means that there is some problem in the tubes after doing a tubal test if we find that tubes are not patent then it is better to go for in vitro fertilization and embryo transfer Uh, so can we give a att drug in the first trimester uh, trimester of pregnancy yes as i had mentioned anti tubercular drugs can be given there are only few drugs which are not which are not to be given but the usual regime is okay second line drugs cannot be given quinolone especially uh, so sir what could be the uh, preventive measures of genital tuberculosis in males uh this is prevention that is a prevention usually we are giving a, that is a preventive therapy usually we are giving that open cases thorough pulmonary tuberculosis open sputum positive so we are giving prophylaxis that is the preventing prophylaxis we are giving inh 5 to 10 mg per kg body weight for 6 months 6 months that is the preventive therapy inh or we are giving now inh rifampicin and rifapentin also we are now we uh, using in weekly basis so nowadays preventive therapy is uh, that is prophylaxis for treatment usually it is giving to open case like it, uh, sputum positive cases thank you sir so ma'am any views about the preventive measures of genital tuberculosis in females see genital tuberculosis in females is usually asymptomatic so preventive measures again the same which sir has mentioned if there is a person who has infectious tuberculosis other people can take prophylaxis yes. uh, thank you ma'am thank you sir so with this i would now like to proceed with vote of thanks uh, so if any other questions uh, please type in q and a section we we'll try to cover it up Uh, so now, uh, uh, and sir, proceeding towards the vote of thanks. So, with it gives me immense pleasure to thank Dr. Ajay Kumar Bhera and Dr. Anupama Dave for their valuable time and valuable efforts on working towards the genital tuberculosis and case presentations in both males and females. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you, sir, for your valuable knowledge. I hope that our audience must have. Uh, gained a lot of insights and a part of your knowledge that could be implemented in their clinical practices i would like to thank a moment to uh, to our supporter viatris for supporting us throughout this webinar i would like to thank all the attendees and all the participants for their valuable time and efforts and for joining this webinar we have a series of upcoming tb webinars so i request all the participants to kindly subscribe and like our pages on instagram facebook and youtube for updated information please subscribe to our newsletters with this i would now like to proceed with the closure of the webinar thank you ma'am and thank you sir thank you ma'am thank you dr shubhi thank you dr shubhi and all the whole mls team it was a wonderful experience <coughs> thank you ma'am thank you thank you to all i request all the participants to kindly submit their post polls as the feedbacks are very valuable to us